They call it the Lenovo Yoga 9i, and here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, I'd like to thank Intel for sponsoring this video and sending over the Yoga 9i, as it's given us the opportunity to look at the Intel Evo platform. A platform that promises better battery life, better charge times, better performance, Wi-Fi 6, and fast transfer speeds, as well as connectivity through Thunderbolt 4. And as I've been going through this laptop, I have to say it has shown to be a better performing laptop than one without the Intel Evo platform badge. And we'll get into that later in the video, and I'll explain why that is and where the Intel Evo platform you know, really project came from and how we're at where we are today. First and foremost, as we're jumping into the video, before we get into all that, let's check out the build quality and usability of the Yoga 9i. It's a thin and light laptop, all aluminum build quality, and I love the little classy touches that they've put into this laptop. You have a very nice professional yoga logo engraved into the top cover. You have an engraved Yoga 9 series along the front bezel of the screen. And I like the little touches of Lenovo here along the speaker grill. This is a speaker, and we'll jump into the audio test here in just a minute, as well as the neatly integrated pen into the backside of the chassis. So there's a lot of nice features that make this laptop a simple, on-the-go professional laptop. Now, one thing that you will note, of course, is that this is a two-in-one laptop. Flip it over, grab the pen, and you're off to the races in regards to your creativity and artist needs. Now, in regards to the pen functionality, as you can see, as I do a nice thin line, you can do a thin to thick line, thin to thick, so the pressure sensitivity works very well. Thin, thick, let's see if I can get thin, thick. And then also the two in one tablet mode. Uh, the laptop weighs enough, even though this is a pretty slick surface, if I push on the laptop as I'm doing it, it shifts a little bit. So if you had a grippier surface, it wouldn't move as much, but still laptop, because it isn't too light, doesn't just kind of blow away from you really quickly. But then also, you know, if you wanted, you could use it in like full tablet mode uh, in your hand and that's very comfortable as well. So really, whatever use case you wanna use it in, whether it's on the stand, whether it's leaning up against something, so like I, I normally wouldn't use my coffee cup, but my coffee cup's sitting here, so why not? You can use your coffee cup as a little stand, and that works, works really well. So overall, the pen sensitivity is suitable for your needs, and of course, the fact that you can store the pen right up there is absolutely fantastic. Now the ports on this laptop are good. Slightly limited in my opinion, as it only has a USB type A, two USB type C's and a headphone jack. But keep in mind, if you go ahead and plug like a monitor into your USB type C and your monitor is able to push out power through a USB type C cable, then technically you would only need one cable to run a monitor and power your laptop at the same time. If you don't, however, you can simply power your laptop with the USB type C, and then you still have a USB type C and a USB type A open for other connectivity. Now we're gonna test moving 34 gigs from an SSD onto the laptop. So we'll go ahead and click and release that, start the timer, and then we'll see how long that that takes. To move 34 gigs of raw footage onto the laptop through Thunderbolt 4 took one minute and 16 seconds. And regarding the Thunderbolt 4 and charger that is included, you can charge the laptop to four hours of runtime in just 15 minutes. And that's where we talk about the Intel Evo platform really making a difference. Most laptops to get that much battery life, you have to do an entire charge, let alone getting four hours of battery in just 15 minutes of charge. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Lenovo Yoga 9i, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So the Intel Evo platform is meeting us at our real world needs and giving us real world performance. Like for instance, I need to stop by and pick up a coffee and in 15 minutes I can have four hours of charge time, which is a half a day's work. I mean, that's fantastic. And then over on the other side, you're gonna have your power port clicking on and off with ease. Coming into the inside of the chassis, let's do a open and close test as well as a quick screen flex. So open and close a little bit stiff with that hinge, but then let's go ahead and check out the screen flex really quickly. And it it almost has no screen flex. It's a very, very stiff screen. I'm liking the screen flex on this laptop being minimal. Great work from Lenovo with this nice, solid aluminum top cover. This laptop does have a fingerprint reader, so just pop your fingerprint there 
and opens right up for you. Now, the keyboard meets my needs for sure. It has a full size shift key. You have a bunch of helpful function buttons such as volume control, brightness. You can even jump straight into your settings from the keyboard deck, which I really like. A lot of times I don't wanna to get to my settings. I've gotta kinda of navigate to the windows, search settings, all that. You just click it right there and it pops right up for you. You can also have a calculator right off the bat, which I actually really like being that I do a lot of benchmarking and testing. The calculator comes in handy a lot to me. So I love that there's just a quick function button to pull that up. Cause I'm always having to like search Google to find a calculator and I use it, like I said, I use a calculator a lot on my day to day. The trackpad is solid as well. They fit a good size trackpad onto this laptop. Normally with uh, smaller laptops, they kind of shrink the trackpad for some reason. This is a 14 inch laptop. And so it's nice to see them including a slightly larger trackpad than some of the other brands. It has a lighter click sound rather than that deeper, more like softened click. Um, so I'm gonna give you a quick sample here of the trackpad and the keyboard in use so you can hear how that sounds. Regarding the speaker, you actually have this speaker bar. It runs between the keyboard deck and the screen. It actually rotates with the screen as you're going into presentation mode. So that way the speakers don't end up on the back side of the chassis pointing away from you. And here's a quick audio sample of the speaker in use. It's really nice, uh, especially uh, for a 14 inch laptop. Normally you don't have incredible audio experiences on these smaller laptops, but here's a quick audio sample for you to check that out. Let's go ahead and check out the webcam really quickly. You do have a manual cutoff switch for the webcam to avoid any cyber spying. And here's a sample of the webcam in use so you can see how that looks and sounds. Here is the webcam on the Lenovo Yoga 9i and a little audio sample for you as well. Moving on to the battery life results, this is where we see again the Intel Evo platform standing out as a benefit to real world use cases. All the tests have been run at least three times to ensure the accuracy of the benchmarks you will see throughout the video. So the three laptops with the Intel Evo platform are the HP Spectre X360, the Lenovo Yoga 9i, and the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. Okay, so these three laptops have the Intel Evo platform. And as you see, they get substantially better battery life than the other laptops on the lineup. You can see the Razer Blade 13 Stealth with the i7 1165G7, but it doesn't have the Intel Evo platform. So we're seeing slightly decreased battery life results out of that laptop because Razer did not partner with Intel to get the most optimization possible. However, they did do that with the Razer Book. And so there's substantially better battery life with the Razer Book but the Razer Blade 13 Stealth did not. And then also you see the Ryzen 7 5700U on the chart getting lower benchmark scores. So if you're curious if Ryzen or Intel has better battery life, with the Intel Evo platform, you're seeing better battery life out of these Intel laptops as opposed to this Ryzen laptop. For the Photoshop battery life results, we're running Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery went dead. And for Premiere Pro, we're running a 1080p project on loop until the battery goes dead with motion graphics, B-roll, music, and a main shot. Now regarding color gamut range, color accuracy, and the screen brightness, I'm gonna have those results coming up on the screen now. This is a bright, crisp screen, especially for a 14 inch screen. Normally those screens get around the high 200s to low 300s. This is in the mid to high 300s as far as the screen brightness is concerned. So this will be great for you know being outside, being on the go, if you're at a coffee shop, kind of like in a, in a bright window. This laptop will have the brightness you need to be able to see your screen and see what you're working on. And the color gamut range is pretty solid. It's not 100% across the board, but you do have a high sRGB, which will get you that color accuracy you need for on the go tasks. We're gonna get into the thermals and fan noise here in just a minute, but first let's start out in the performance benchmarks in Geekbench 5. As you can see, single core performance on this laptop is fantastic. It sits just below the MacBook Pro M1 M1 Pro and M1 Max, this laptop sits right on their tail. By just 100 points, this laptop is behind them. I mean, that's insane single core performance. Now, where we see a slight shift is in the Geekbench multi-core score. And to show you that this laptop has what it takes 
for multitasking, I'm gonna get into some real world tests. We're gonna open up a YouTube video, multiple web browser windows to see if we can do some research while also working in three of the Adobe Creator apps, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe InDesign, and Adobe Illustrator to see how well this laptop actually handles multitasking. Is it all about the Geekbench scores and all about the cores and threads? Let's find out. So as you can see, I'm currently working here in Photoshop, making this piece of art look that much nicer. <laughs> and then um, as we shift over into InDesign, you can see I've opened up a doc here, and then we have Illustrator. I've got a doc going on here, make some shapes, whatever. But then I'm also running a YouTube video in the background, and I'm searching about the Intel Evo platform and the Lenovo Yoga 9i. And so those, are, those things are all happening consecutively, and I'm also in the Lenovo Vantage Center, but let's jump over, do a little bit of work real quick and jump over. And you can see the CPU is only at 43, 30, 35 to 43% usage, especially when I'm in the specific tool. Let's you do a bunch, bunch of work there and jump back over. See, it jumps up a little bit when I'm doing more work inside of the tool. Um, but then it drops down as soon as I kind of go into more of the idle mode. And you can see having 16 gigs of RAM is also very important because we're using 78% of our memories. I'd recommend going with the 16 gigs because that'll give you the ceiling that you need in order to not task your computer and bottleneck it as far as RAM is concerned. So overall, like I said, multitasking is definitely doable on this laptop. As you can see, I can jump between the apps very quickly without any lag. Uh, so it's it's gonna work well. Now that we've seen how this laptop performs in multitasking, let's check out singular app performance. And inside the Photoshop benchmark from Puget Systems, you can see that this laptop tops the chart on all the mobile processors that I've reviewed on my channel. So that means that the Ryzen 7 5700U inside of the HP NVX360 is beat out by this laptop by quite a bit. And this laptop even beats out the MacBook Pro M113, which is the hype of the town when in regards to performance. So don't just go with hype, go with facts. Now you see here in the benchmarks objectively that the Intel Evo platform actually makes a difference in performance. It's not just marketing hype. I wouldn't tell you it did if it didn't. I mean, the chart proves it. I don't have to even pretend that it makes it better because I have objective data that the Intel Evo platform helps with performance. Now, if you're gonna be considering this laptop for After Effects, it will be able to handle it, but it's not gonna blow your socks off. After Effects is a very heavy program, and this does not have the GPU performance necessary to really like give you the umph behind an After Effects project. But if you're lightly in After Effects from time to time, this laptop will be able to handle it as you see according to the benchmark score, but it's not gonna, like I said, blow your socks off. Shifting into video editing, this laptop makes a great 1080p video editing laptop. You're gonna see solid playback with zero drop frames inside of a project with 16,177 frames in total. It's about a nine minute project with motion graphics and music and B-roll on top. And it plays back very smoothly with zero drop frames. Now regarding X export times, good export times as well, as you can see coming up on the screen. So if you're gonna be a creator, specifically a designer or an artist and occasionally working in some video editing, this would be a great laptop. If you're gonna be somebody in some heavy 4K or even 6K video editing, I would sincerely tell you not to get this laptop. It just isn't built for that. It's more of the on-the-go designer, artist, and light video editor laptop. Now, regarding the fan noise and thermals, as promised, I'm pulling up on the screen right now the Photoshop scores in relation to the fan modes that you can take advantage of in the Lenovo Vantage Center and the fan noise and thermals that are attributed to those specific modes. So basically I ran the Photoshop benchmark on different fan modes. I ran it on just battery power and you can see the different scores as well as noise and thermals for each of those tests. And this laptop did not get above 45 decibels on all the tests that I ran. So I was really impressed that this laptop was able to stay quiet during my benchmark tests. Regarding the upgrade path, if you didn't watch the unboxing, you're able to swap the SSD in this laptop, but you're unable to swap the RAM as the RAM is soldered to the motherboard. I once again wanna thank Intel for sponsoring this video and sending us the Lenovo Yoga 9i. And I hope that you've seen through the objective benchmarks that the Intel Evo platform actually makes a real world difference in the performance of a laptop. So if you're already considering an Intel laptop, I would keep an eye out for the Intel Evo platform badge as that will allow you to know that, okay, 
that actually does make a difference. That means that the laptop brand has partnered with Intel to get the most optimization possible in regards to performance, battery life, charge time, Wi-Fi 6, and that Thunderbolt 4 speed. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.